We are back at it again, thrifting for our favorite home decor at the Deseret Industry Thrift Store. And this week we're gonna be a little more picky. We are getting ready to move to our new shop here in probably the next month. And we've got a lot of stuff we're trying to be, you know, the word gets thrown around hoarder sometimes and we don't wanna be that. We like to resell most of what we thrift. So even though things are nice or a decent price, if it needs a lot of repair, needs a lot of painting, we're trying to avoid those things and curate kind of more of a farmhouse look that Jamie wants to have in the new shop. This is gonna be a little bit of a challenge for me because there's a lot of things that I see every week at the thrift store. I'm like, oh, I can paint that, I can fix that and repurpose it to be this new function. But I have to tell myself, you know what? There's a lot of work I have to do at the new shop. That building has a lot of renovation that still needs to be done and I don't have time to do this and actually neither does Jamie. She's the one helping me do all the renovations over at the new shop. So I can't have her be painting all the things that I thrift while I'm doing the work over there either. Real quick tip, this is one of the places where we're looking for collectibles. We're looking for Fiesta Ware, we're looking for Pyrex, we're looking for specialty dishes that are maybe imported from England, stoneware, special china, things like that. So just because this is under the collectibles glass doesn't mean that I have to buy it. This rooster, I think was $15. It's a little steep on the price and he's really slick porcelain. That's gonna be hard to paint. Books can be a really great thing to find at the thrift store. They're great for risers. I also love looking for old cookbooks with fun recipes that have kind of been forgotten. So not a lot here today. Under $30, this is like the walk of shame. <laughs> Pretty edge that one. Holy moly, that's heavy. It's a nice piece. Oh, it's got a little bit of chip there. I think it'll be all right. It's so pretty. Make room in the cart. Five bucks. This one's next to it's cool too for five bucks. That's metal. Oh, check out this old hand plane. Good size. Oh, look at that. It's out there hiding. This? Yeah. What about this basket here? It's already, uh, Kind of whitewashed for gathering. Uh, I like that. No price on it. Oh, there it is, four dollars. Boy, you're getting all kinds of floral over here. All right, a little better at this thrift store, but it's really it's, just like volume. It's big stuff. Yeah, it's just it's large. Like we got like twenty things, maybe ten. Yeah. I always have super high hopes in savers because they usually have tonnage, but let's go see what the pricing looks like. Jamie's already been through here, so let's see what she didn't grab. They've got good stuff. $2.99, $7.99, so both pretty cool. Fake book, $4.99. I'm gonna talk to her and see if she even saw these. You found some stuff. I found candlesticks. Oh, that's a cool bird gauge. I saw you passed up quite a few things. Yeah. Is it I mean, pricing? Is it a pricing issue? Pricing and like sometimes I just get tired buying the same stuff. Did you see the big eagle? Yes, I did see the big eagle and I did want that. I did want it. Yeah. No, on the eagle? No. 10.99. So we drove all the way over to Savers for items. <laughs> they had stuff. They had stuff, but pricing. Yeah, we'll go to one more Savers and, and then it is what it is. Thrift store number four. For four, actually that's like five bucks each, huh? Yeah, that's a lot. Hey, here we go. 
I can buy this one. I have a couple of thrift flips from a few weeks ago. One is this bucket that we got for $2 and I decided that I wanted to go with a sheep theme. So I'm using the farmer's market mold. You always want to use cornstarch when you're using a mold so that way it comes out good. Air dry clay is going to work perfect for this. Peel it out and then we're ready for glue. I'm just using wood glue because that's what I have handy, but any glue really works. Just let it set up really well and make sure to mush it down, but not too hard. So that way you don't mush the mold. Next up while that's drying is this old sign that we got for free. I'm using um, skeleton key for a background. And then I'm going to be adding some new transfers. Whispering Willow just came out from Iron Orchid Designs and it's got a great kind of a romantic foresty theme. So I'm just gonna use flowers on this. You're gonna see me pull out a few mushrooms and then I decided this also needed a mold. The mold that I'm using is bird song. It looks really good with flowers and I'm just gonna do two birds kind of facing each other. Again, don't forget your cornstarch and your air dry clay. You flip it over and then you peel the back off and this one be super careful because there's lots of detail. We're gonna glue it on there and get it set. <laughs> it just kind of flopped it on there. I smeared it around a little bit and then I kind of wipe off the excess glue with a uh, artist brush. You just do your best. I like to paint over the top while the clay is still wet. Then I let it dry and I usually will come back and paint in a few of the cracks that happen because air dry clay will crack. You can pick up all of the paint and products that you see me use at jamierayvintage.com. I've decided to just go ahead and use skeleton key on my little bucket here. It's gonna pair well with the design that I have coming for this one. I'm using the English twall transfer on the bucket with the sheep because it also has sheep in it. Make sure after you do any kind of transfers that you're using a piece of the transfer to smush it down. And then in this case, I'm gonna be distressing just to add a little bit of age to the transfer and really meld it with my background. Next, I'm just gonna seal this up with a little bit of Sweet Pickens top coat. You could also use clear wax, but I decided that I wanted it to dry nice and fast, and I wasn't sure if somebody was gonna plant in it, so maybe they would want something that could hold up to a little bit of liquid. To keep things easy, I'm just going to seal up my transfer and molds with the Sweet Pickens top coat as well. I wanted to add just a little bit of definition to all of my molds, so now that the top coat has dried, I'm just using white wax to bring out the detail. Once you get the wax on there, just wipe it back so that way you just have it in the cracks and detail and then you just let it set up and you're good to go. So we were struggling a little bit. We thought maybe we hadn't found anything, but after four thrift stores and compiling it together here on the table, we got a lot of stuff. I feel like we did really good to like catch that farmhouse vibe. I'm super excited for this next thrift haul. If you want to use the paint and products you saw me use on a couple of my makeovers today, be sure to visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.